On today's episode of Detour, we're talking about something that I would say I am actually great at, which is pivoting. Pivoting, pivoting my business when times are tough. It is something my investors have always been uh, very pleased with the way we've approached ourselves when times are tough. They actually call us cockroaches because they're impossible to kill. And I think that's really a testament to why we're here 17 years later. And I want to talk about how we did it. And I really want to talk about how you should think about it so that you can see if it applies to your business, your life, your career. I think we can always be pivoting. There's so many moments of uh, opportunity to change what you're doing and stay ahead of the curve. And thank you, everyone, that have been posting the detour post. We have our first winner for the Menlo Club package. Santana, we're sending out your Menlo Club uh, membership. Keep posting. Keep sharing. I'm going to keep picking winners. I appreciate the, the support. I had my biggest week ever on the podcast last week, so I truly appreciate it. This is all about sharing information and really building a uh, community for those that don't have it in their city or in their neighborhood or in their industry. So share with me what you're thinking. I can help connect you with other listeners that are also doing interesting things. And let's see if we can all build great businesses together. There's an art to pivoting. And I'm here to tell you how we've done it over the last 17 years in our business. Uh, our First kind of foray into fashion was launching 5.4, uh, a traditional men's brand selling to boutiques, retailers across the country. We scaled it up, department stores, uh, distributors globally. And when the recession hit, that whole thing fell apart. So we quickly had a couple of choices to make. Shut down the business, figure out another business model, uh, start a new business, start a new brand. And we actually are always very aggressive when things are rough and we try many things. We're not afraid to say, hey, the original idea didn't work. Uh, we failed and let's move on. And in 2009, when our business was falling apart, we ended up launching retail stores and the idea that direct to consumer was the future. We didn't know that it would be on the web in the form that we ended up in, but we knew the internet was there and it was important, but there was no way to drive traffic at scale in 2008, 2009. So we opted to give a uh, retail a shot. Leases were cheap. Uh, they were willing to bill at our stores. So we were like, let's give it a shot doesn't really work at scale. We, we found a lot of problems with it. So in 2012, we again were at the uh, 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 a crossing point and we end up testing subscription. And subscription becomes the business model that pretty much changed our business, changed our lives, and created all the opportunities we have today. But it came from a lot of acceptance of failure and trying different things. So when our business struggled in 2008, 2009, we then go open up retail stores. I then take a shot at a new brand called Young and Reckless that ends up doing extremely well early on, putting some money on our balance sheet, giving us the opportunity to even scale our business. And that really is what, uh, we decided to take on as the new way of thinking, which is give things a shot, try, and really understand if we can execute it. And so pivoting is something that we all do in our lives. We do it in our careers. We do it in uh, when we own our own business. We do it in uh, personal lives. The thing about pivoting to be successful at it you can't have an ego. Uh, you also need to be opportunistic. And you have to be able to move quick because when things are changing like they are today, you aren't able to take 
too much time to do the proper thinking and developing that brands used to or businesses used to or people used to. Things move fast and it's better to throw stuff at a wall and iterate quickly. That's my school of thought. Other people want perfection all the way through and that's how they feel they should be launching products, businesses. And there are plenty of success stories from that way of thinking. I am not that person. So I'm just giving away kind of how I think about it. And really, you don't necessarily need to always be thinking about pivoting, but you should be looking at your business pretty objectively and be like, can this sustain the way I'm making money? Is this realistically going to continue on for years and years to come? If not, and you have an ounce of doubt, you should be thinking, anticipating on how you can move quickly into the next iteration of your business. Because if you wait till doomsday comes, it may be too late. And we've done it both ways. We've anticipated and then we've waited. And let me tell you, it's very, very painful when you wait. And to have the mindset of, hey, whatever is working today will not work tomorrow is I think the right way to be thinking about it. Uh, Big companies like Amazon or Nike, they're constantly talking about how they have a mindset of disrupting themselves. And that ultimately is what pivoting is. Uh, It's all semantics at the end of the day, but what you're really doing is making a change. And the best way to make a change is really looking at your business and being like, can this work? Does this work forever? And in most cases, the answer is no, it does not work forever. Like think about all these industries in the last 15, 20 years, these huge companies that are on the verge of bankruptcy are uh, completely gone. Could you imagine like being Eastman Kodak and not seeing the digital camera revolution and they completely missed it? Taking pictures is bigger than ever And the company that effectively invented it at scale is not part of it because they thought what they thought was going to last forever. And really large companies have two ways of thinking it. We're going to milk this till the wheels fall off. Or you know what? Things are going well. Let's start investing in our future because we know we will not exist in the current form 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, especially the way the world works. So we, I'll give you a a different example when thinking about pivoting. Think about Young and Reckless. If you've followed the brand or familiar with it, it was a brand that launched on MTV with my business partner, Drama. We launched it essentially as a brand to capitalize on effectively a television commercial on the show Fantasy Factory which is one of the highest rated male TV shows on MTV at the time. So we really took it as an opportunity, get a whole lot of TV time and sell some t-shirts and hoodies around it. So we launched and we had immediate success. We effectively were like a merch brand riding off the success of a television show. And quickly we realized that was not going to last. One, the TV show was not going to last forever. Two, treating the brand like this would not last forever. So we immediately started investing in how do we grow beyond the television show. We invested in doing deals with musicians and creatives that made the brand feel bigger than life. We then started developing more product. We started with t-shirts, hats, and hoodies like every other men's streetwear brand does. We then evolve into denim, which is now a huge category for us, into accessories, footwear. We've evolved the brand into women's. We've done kids. And it really was our ability to recognize we do have a captive audience of a customer, but our brand is always going to be young. It's, It's not like Menlo Club where our customer grows old with us. Young and Reckless will always forever be for young people. And so how do you stay top of mind with young people? 
it obviously leads with the marketing in this case is like continuing to stay relevant to that audience. How you stay relevant to a young person has evolved in the last 10 years of the brand. When we first started, you stayed relevant by being relevant on television. That evolved to Facebook, then it evolved to Instagram. Then it had a moment of Vine and Snapchat. And now today it's TikTok along with Instagram and a host of other things. But we were always front and center on every single one of those waves. And we were able to constantly connect with young people because of that. Then it comes down to the product. The product has evolved dramatically as well. If you look at our collection today versus the collection last year versus the collection the year before, my view when it came to product and the vision of, that we had for the brand was we just have to stay young. We don't have to be married to an aesthetic. And that allowed us the flexibility to just be on trend with what's going on in youth culture. So we were able to really take advantage of that. And that really is a testament to constantly evolving. And you could call it pivoting, evolving, but that's what it is. It's like, what are you ultimately trying to do? We're ultimately trying to get the attention of young people through our clothes. How do you do that? That will change over time how you do that. And the clothes they wear will change over time. If you're trying to be a classic brand for young people, good luck. Because that is very, very difficult game to play. And I think those are some of the lessons that we've learned with the concept of pivoting. In 5-4 and Menlo Club, that was a pivot of business models. The business model of selling our clothes to a retailer effectively has died. We just saw it early after the recession because we felt like in 2009, after the recession, we never saw the world of retail coming back to the way it was. And it didn't. It changed forever. It was a combination of the recession um, kind of going against the internet. It changed the world forever in the way we shop. And fortunately for us, we saw that and we took advantage of it. And that change is happening again. We are constantly looking ways to evolve our business. And when I think about Menlo Club and I think about New Republic, I think about Young and Reckless, Grand AC, my goal is really... How do I tell a story that connects with people forever? And that's the marketing side of the pivot. You know, we rode the wave of the Facebook and Instagram ads. Now we're riding the, the wave of building communities. That wave has lasted a long time. Building a powerful community always helps build a powerful brand. So that was somewhere where we were actually weakened and we've now taken advantage of. And we're doing the right steps to actually scale that part of it. The business model has to constantly evolve. Subscription started as monthly. Now we have a quarterly offering. Maybe it will evolve from there. Uh, we sell shoes today. We sell active wear. We were focusing on price a few years ago. Now we're focusing on making the best product possible and keeping price in mind, not vice versa. And that's created a whole lot of opportunities. I can't tell you where we'll be in five years, but I can tell you that we will be a completely different business and the way we think and the way we approach things will constantly change. And my last piece of advice for some of you people that are older, uh, I'm 39, so I would consider myself older in this concept, uh, is you need to surround yourself with young people because that's the only way you'll know how and when that you're missing an opportunity or you need to disrupt yourself. I pride myself on staying on top of culture in general, business models. And I'm very, very curious as a person on what other people are doing in other industries. If you do not take the time and effort to understand what other people are doing, your ass will get kicked, I promise you. It's mind-blowing to me how many people in my own industry aren't aware with everything that's going on in our industry. Not only you should be aware of all these different amazing businesses happening in your world, but pay attention to things happening in, the, in other more fast-paced, disruptive industries and see how you can apply it to yourself because that is how the next great business, next great product, service, brand will be built as applying the best from the best. 
So take a look at your business, take a look at your career, take a look at your life and think about, is it time to make a pivot? <laughs>